the Nashville area and trying to figure out whether or not they have a Wolbachia in them. So in reflecting on our participation at the School for Science and Math, we realized some of the opportunities that we've been given that you know our fellow classmates at our some schools were not given. And so we came up with sort of like a mission of how you know the things that we've benefited from and how we can sort of pay it forward and allow other students to have the same opportunities. So we definitely wanted to encourage participation uh, participation in research because I know a lot of us when we were in eighth grade didn't consider research, didn't know what research was even. And so we wanted to encourage participation in that, show them what scientific fields are available, and also just give them the access and exposure that they need to say that this is something that I may want to pursue later on in life. Also, the lack of resources is something that um, a lot of schools experience, especially our zone schools, from you know pipettes to reagents. Schools are not able to fund all of these science projects, so we wanted to ensure that all these students were given the opportunity to go through these advanced scientific techniques and use these materials. We also wanted to foster a desire for them to continue researching um, and also just teach students about this project and teach them about how science and the real world come together. So we came up with a five-week plan. So um, this project has been implemented other places. We are the first to have students actually go in and work with a classroom teacher to implement this project. But there are a series of labs that were available, so we sort of looked at our scheduling with over 10 and what we needed to accomplish and came up with this lesson plan. So we have sort of five weeks where we went through every time and began with a presentation on the subject matter and actually did the procedure and had like an activity or something along to go with it and to augment their understanding of everything. So engaging through the internet, here's our website that we created. We um, really wanted to allow people outside the school system or even just the students who wanted to have more exposure outside of the classroom to go onto the internet and see what exactly it is that we've been doing, what we do in the classroom, what we do when we come back from the classroom. Um, we have some pictures that we've taken from over 10 that are available to look through. We also have all of our PowerPoint presentations and other learning materials for teachers and for students also to go and um, access on the internet. Um, this is a Facebook page that's actually set up prior to um, our joining the project. So this is the Wolbachia Project page. Um, it's successful, it has 144 likes on it. So uh, this provides a sort of a foundation for teachers to uh, you know interact with each other for Dr. Gordon to go on and say this is what's going on in the scientific community. You know, these are some of the cool things that we found if you're interested. And so this is sort of how Mr. Taylor got involved in the project. He expressed interest saying that this is something that I would like to do. Um, and so aside from that, because Twitter is something that's huge with people our age, you know, we have smartphones have access to Twitter um, all the time. And also because Mr. Taylor has a huge focus on technology in the classroom. He allows the students to have their cell phones out. They communicate with each other through Twitter. They're able to see different links, pictures, and whatnot. So we decided we would piggyback on this idea and also have a Twitter page where we updated saying, you know, this is the this is what the protocol that we're doing today. Um, we also tweeted pictures and results of the gel pictures that you see above. Um, we were not as successful with this page as we had hoped to be, which is something that we'll work on in the future. But uh, we did. We were able to communicate with both Mr. Taylor and uh, Dr. Bordenstein through this Twitter page, um, and also have um, one of the cool things was there's this uh, user inter integrated DNA technology, which is a company that would retweet our stuff and favorite it, which made us feel important, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> so talking a little bit about so our first day in the classroom, um, there are a couple things that we wanted to achieve. The first was a free survey, so we wanted to sort of get a baseline. What are the students feeling like? You know, having us go in, being sort of their age, how are they going to respond to that? And so also we could um, form a baseline to say this is how we helped, or this is how you know this, this were these were the effects. We also wanted to give a Wolbachia project presentation, so just show them this is what's going on. This is what you're going to be involved in. The methods and lab presentations they can see. This is these are the things that we'll be doing over the next five weeks, um, and also a teaching activity for pipetting. So in biology, you spend a lot of time with your fingers pipetting, and so knowing to pick the right pipette, how to set it, and whatnot. We wanted to make sure that they knew that at the very beginning, so that they would be successful throughout the project. And then the homework for that one was insect collection, which was a little bit difficult considering we started um, during the cold months and that the winter stayed a little bit longer than we all would have liked. But um, the insect collection was just so that the next week that we went in there, we could begin by going ahead and extracting the DNA from those insects. So in the introduction lesson, we wanted to touch on a couple of important things. One was the importance of studying Wolbachia. So significance is something that you often have to justify when you're researching. So we wanted to let them know that, you know, even we didn't know that 10, only 10% 10 of your cells are human and you know how prevalent bacteria is and how prevalent insects are. 
Um, so we wanted to let them know that this is something that's relevant to their everyday lives and also talk about Milwaukee and how, you know, it's very interesting as a bacteria, how it manipulates the reproductive um, systems of the host and whatnot. So we wanted to show them how we can take advantage of these things that are occurring on the biological level to, you know, benefit us. And also we wanted to introduce the golden outline of the project so they knew what we were there for. So we wanted to encourage them and support their pursuit of scientific research. And we also had a matching activity, so our project, we sort of ran through the different labs and talked about their purposes, what each lab was supposed to achieve. So we wanted them to keep, you know, making this connection, saying, hey, DNA extraction, the purpose is to get the DNA from this once living animal insect creature. Um, and so that was just a sort of reinforcement, which is something that we really wanted to focus on, because this is higher level information. We wanted them to be able to, you know, continue making those same connections over and over again throughout the project. So here's the pipetting activity. Um, the goal was to familiarize students with working with pipettes, so um, picking the right pipette, knowing the limitations of a certain pipette, how, you know, the volume it can carry. Um, also learning how to set that volume, saying I want 20 microliters of this reagent, so how to set that. Also how to transfer the liquids properly, and uh, maintaining sterility, which is important in biology, so you don't have, you know, cross-contamination and things like that, so. These are a couple of things that we focused on the activity. So here's an example of the protocol that we developed. We thought it'd be cool to sort of simplify things, and so we played on the red, um, red, yellow, blue primary color combinations to form other colors. So they, depending on the volume that we asked them to pipette, they would, have, you know, they would come up with a different shade of each color. So we can then match what shade they got with the shade that you're supposed to get, and say you did this correctly, or let's try again and do it over. So they had a lot of fun with that, getting to make colors as sort of like art of science all for them. And I'll let Will tell you a little bit about the pre-survey. So we uh, created a pre-survey to get a baseline, as Mary suggested, of where the students are at in three main categories of questions. <clears throat> Their interest in science, how knowledgeable they are or they think they are. You can't really gauge them by giving them a test. You don't want to give them a test. A real test. And uh, what their interest in science are. Yeah. Uh, the, their... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> survey. This is an example of a survey. So there are different questions, like there's 21 questions on the survey. The examples are, I'm able to learn, oh, learning style. What kind of learning style do I have? That was a different one. So, uh, example, learning style, I'm able to learn more of a hands-on approach. So that's the kind of approach we try to take. Uh, interest in science, I like taking science classes. I plan taking more science classes. Uh, I generally enjoy my science classes. And not the knowledge that says, do you know what DNA is? How, how much do you know about DNA? You know what PCR is, you know what gel is, or is. And we don't really know if they actually know what it is. We just know that they think that they know what it is. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is learning style. Uh, you can see that pretty highly they think that they like a hands on approach using technology. And this is a credit to Mrs. Taylor because she's using technology in this class all the time. Very hands on with the science class. We do lots of labs. This is pre survey. Then uh, their interest in science, you can see that we have some high people and then others, there's more low and they don't really enjoy science, they don't think it's that important. They just take kind of a class you have to take. It's not that great. And then finally, their scientific knowledge. You can see that they either don't feel confident about their knowledge or they really don't think they know a lot. And that's pretty widespread over the span. Uh, and then, so those kinds of things just to introduce the topic and the idea of scientific research are being implemented in the high school program. Those kinds of things were done on our first day in class. So our second day when we went to Overton was when we first implemented an actual experimentation protocol. Um, we followed the outline of basically reiterating the purpose of the lab, followed by the actual experimentation. The presentation that kind of reinforces the purpose of what the lab is was done on like as a whole class, and then we would slow up into smaller groups and actually do the experimentation. So we started for our second day in the classroom, we started with a DNA extraction PowerPoint that went over the purpose of not only the big picture, why are we extracting DNA, but also what is the purpose of like the materials and the agents we were trying to use in the protocol, just to bring home the idea to the students that everything that we do in protocol has a purpose. You know, we don't just use random buffers and reagents, everything is meant to do something to get the final product, which in this case is DNA. Um, the, this was a rough experiment because it took a lot of time and that kind of shows the time constraints issue that we had with some of our protocols, specifically this one. 
Um, it took a very long time to get the DNA. Um, and so the students were not able to fully complete the protocol within the one and a half hour time span we had during the class that we, while we were there. So um, we stayed after a little bit to just finish up the protocol. And then we came, when we came back to Vanderbilt, we took the DNA samples um, and uh, used spectrometry to confirm that we had, in fact, or the students had, in fact, extracted DNA from the insects that they had collected or had already been preserved in the classroom. So the next, the third week that we went into the classroom, which was our third day, we um, took the DNA that they had previously extracted and um, the students did PCR, which is necessary. It's like a middle step between DNA extraction and gel electrophoresis um, to sort of get enough DNA to be able to confirm what kind of DNA we have and identify um, what kind of DNA we, the students had extracted from the insects. So we, um, same thing, same sort of situation format. We reinforced the purpose of the lab, why are we doing the PCR, and then we conducted the experiment in small groups. Um, with PCR, it's a, it's a shorter protocol and a shorter experiment, so we have a little bit of time, of time to sort of reinforce um, the steps of PCR. So we actually um, did a sort of more in-depth understanding, hopefully a fun activity for the kids. Um, just to sort of get an interaction with the students because I think they were really having a lot of fun with some of the projects and so we wanted to create an activity that could help them better understand the, the steps that are involved in PCR. So we created a Twizzler activity where the strands of Twizzlers represent DNA strands and so we have students find them together and then show DNA iteration, they would untwist them and you know basically straighten them out. And then we had lightsaber gummies which represented primers and so we use those to kind of show that the primers are attaching to the DNA strand and then you um, basically elongate and you create daughter strands. So I think that helped make something fun and interesting. Um, we obviously don't know the exact effects of whether they truly understood all the four steps of PCR, but it was something fun and interesting that we implemented. And, um, it's something that can also be found on our website under teaching supplements, so something fun that we tried to do. Um, we also showed them a PCR video, which if you haven't seen it before, you should definitely check it out. It's pretty funny. Um, and then we finally went back into the lab area and completed the lab with the students. All right, so on the fourth week, we did gel electrophoresis. And the purpose of this was obviously to run um, their DNA samples along with Wolbachia DNA to compare the two and see if our, their insects did have uh, Wolbachia in them. Uh, so, we followed the normal lesson plan. Uh, we gave a presentation on gel electrophoresis, and then we uh, broke right into our small groups to start experimenting. So the students each got to load a, one or two samples into their own gels. So we had three gels, and each group got uh, half a gel to load the samples in. This is definitely the highest pressure experiment they, they've done so far, uh, because as you know, wells are small and you can't puncture them. But our students did great. They all loaded their gels successfully, and we were able to run them for them and uh, sustain them. So here, we have the results of the gels. Um, this is the first gel, just to uh, let you guys know. On the tags 1, 2, and 3, uh, tag 1 means the insect sample, tag 2 is the negative control, and tag 3 is the positive control, with Wolbachia being the Wolbachia DNA. Um, so in our PCR, we ran two primers. The first primer was for uh, mitochondrial product, and this is represented by the top band. This is just to make sure that we ran the PCR correctly. And then the second primer uh, tested for Milwaukee DNA, which is the second band. I'd like to draw your attention to group STCC. Um, their sample, so that's there. there is a, a faint second band which matches up with the positive control. Uh, we sure you it's there, just to show up that long picture. Um, on this next gel, I'd like to draw your attention to group TMASCJ. Uh, those are the group's initials. And they, they too had a second band visible uh, in their sample group. Uh, this one is kind of caught in there. Um, so we were able to have two positive results, which is great. And also all of the, um, all the PCRs worked well, and the gels ran uh, as they should. This is the third gel. Now, we didn't have any positive Wolbachia results from this. However, it was a good teaching moment for the students to realize that even if you get a negative result, it's still a result, and that there's no such thing as, as failure, simply a learning experience. 
Uh, so we thought that was good for the students. Okay, so on our last day, we focused on sort of closing it up and using the results that we had obtained. So um, the first thing was to provide understanding uh, to the students about what is bioinformatics and um, using the sequences that we obtained for the positive samples that we obtained from the students to uh, use, like, to analyze using BLAST, um, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and we presented just final data. We started the day off with um, the gel electrophoresis pictures in groups to sort of get the students to look at a gel and really know that it's not just about experimentation, but like identifying the lanes and knowing where the samples are and being able to tell that, okay, two bands really need the positive sample. Um, and so they used, we had basically a chart and they would mark where they saw two bands and, you know, it was kind of a fun idea to just uh, get the students interacting with their own results and seeing uh, what kind of results they would see on the shell. Um, and then we, we basically told them that we took those samples that were positive and sent them for sequencing, and um, we used those sequences and blasts to sort of show them relationships between other sequences that had been used, and they could see like, oh, this matches with this Wolbachia strain, and that was kind of fun and interesting for them. And so, and then finally, after all of that, we had just a sort of closing discussion where we talked about um, what they learned and hopefully the things that they benefited from throughout the project. And then finally, we had to take the post survey to really understand the effects that hopefully we had had, positive effects hopefully that we had had um, while we were in the classroom. So, as you can see in these pictures, we used we went back from small groups to the bigger classroom for this activity, and we, um, the students were on laptops. One of the um, issues with this is that everybody's sort of on a different pace. Um, we sometimes had log in issues, so they were at, like, a little bit behind a couple steps. So we had to walk through the classroom and make sure everybody was still on pace and still knowing what they should be doing. Um, and so we gave the students the raw sequences through our website, and they basically inputted it into that blast and searched it to see the connections and, like, look at a uh, tree to see, um, you know, what kind of relationships and connections they can make with the sequences they have. So now we have the post survey results, and we want to look at what impact we've had on these students. So the first one we're going to look at is can we take the gain score, so the first post survey minus the pre survey to look at the difference. Obviously, maybe it indicates good or bad, or not bad, but just not that good. Uh, so the first category is interest in science. So this, this is the one which we hope to increase the most, but as you can see, some of the students they really liked it a lot more. They're more interested in science. I want to point to this one especially. <laughs> and then other ones who kind of probably already started out pretty low, they just got lower. Maybe they didn't like us, or they didn't like doing science. I don't know. But this is the only one, only one of the three categories that we can't prove significant that difference between post and pre. So this is what we wanted to do, but it, it still shows that the people that did like it liked it a lot. People didn't like it, they didn't really like it. Uh, the next, uh, knowledge or what they think is their knowledge. This one is really good. Almost all of them are positive. They're all pretty high except for a few low. And the p value, which is that these are the two uh, p tests, right? p value is 0 0.00002. So it's very significant. We can definitely say we made a positive impact on what they think they did, or that would make them more confident in their ability to say, I know what this is, I know what this is. Like, I know what PCR is, or I think I know what PCR is. And then finally, their learning styles. So we show this, this again, a significant key value, this one's really high, that uh, they definitely like a more hands on approach. And afterwards, they know that they like a more hands on approach, a more technologically based approach, a more lab based approach now. And finally, these are comparing the mean over all students of all questions in each category, the pre and post, and you can see the average is above and all. Maybe not significantly, but it's above the average. So, it shows we made a difference. Um, so, results of limitations. Um, we had most of the groups that were able to take DNA from the insects, but we would like to see that number reach 100%. Also, the DNA extraction and gel staining went a bit over time during the class. We had about a 90 minute um, period to teach them each week. Um, so basically, we had some time constraints that we need to, to fix, and 
um, maintain our original outline. And then there was a big gap on what they said they understood and what they probably actually understood. So we might want to, um, which goes along with the overall project implementation, simplify the content a bit, but um, to avoid um, risking the integrity of the information that we're presenting. Um, so you have to find a nice balance there because they are um, kids that are new to this material. Uh, again, the time constraints were a bit of a problem. We want to increase access of our website. We feel like we didn't advertise it as much to the students and we would like them to become more familiar and um, more comfortable going on that site outside of class. And then also um, provide consistency uh, with communicating uh, with uh, and communication and availability of resources to the to Mr. Taylor um, in helping out um, during class. Um, and then the project successes, we had two positive samples that was, was said. There was a general atmosphere of excitement. Uh, everybody had positive attitudes, it seemed. Um, Mr. Chandler even remarked that it helped encourage students to see the world through a different perspective and that the small groups were um, very um, effective in communicating ideas and allowing them to interact more um, informally. All right, so at the conclusion of our project, we uh, interviewed Mr. Taylor again to see what we could improve on. One of the things that we saw and that he saw was that finding the correct balance between highly complex content, but also being able to simplify it for the students so that they could understand. Um, in addition, the timing of our schedules was not ideal, so we were kind of scattered. So ideally, we would like to be there in consecutive weeks. And also to uh, give the teacher a bit more background so they could uh, be more informed as we're conducting the labs with the students. Uh, in the future with this project, we'd like to establish a core curriculum that can be easily mobilized to other schools. Uh, this includes videos, media presentations, feedback. And um, we'd also like to expand the project to other schools in the county and to monitor the, uh, the performance and interests of the students that have participated in the project to see if it affected their uh, interests and selves. We'd like to thank uh, you all for this presentation. This is our classroom over 10. And we'd also like to thank Mr. Taylor for being very gracious to allow us to come to his classroom and Dr. Gordon Steen for uh, the work that's done.